Chalk Loaf 1200 Films Podcast, all horror, all the time. Back on the air. It has been, it's been a while. Where have you been? I've been busy moving. Plus we had the whole pandemic thing going on, but now I am safely moved into my new place. I have a whole house to myself now. Me and Kitty. Hopefully there's no ghosts, but I'm keeping an eye out for them. First thing I gotta discuss. I just watched the episode nine of uh, Star Wars, the last Jedi or the last whatever. And uh, when Kylo Ren is subliminally talking to Rey, even if they're light years apart, he's talking to her like through her brain. When he's talking to her, it makes me think of Frank the Bunny from Donnie Darko. Am I the only one here that, that thinks this? If you haven't seen both films, I will now play you a clip and you can decide for yourself. Here is the first clip. This is Kylo Ren from Episode 9 of Star Wars. And here is Frank the Bunny from Donnie Darko. 28 days. 6 hours. 42 minutes. 12 seconds. That is when the world will end. You can't tell me they don't sound the same. At least... Very, very similar. But let's get going with the movies we have. Seven of the eight are from 2019 that I didn't get to watch last year, which I'm watching this year. Uh, The first one, 2019 Trespassers. Critic rating, 59% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes of 28 these two couples are on a retreat to this fancy little getaway. And, um, strange things start going on, and they get a visitor. And, and then these people in mass start showing up and start making their life difficult. It's basically a ripoff of The Strangers, more or less. Chuck Love. Tell them about the special guest star. What is this? And I got Kylo slash Frank. Uh, yes, there's a special guest star, Feruza Bulk from uh, the little girl from Return to Oz, who's now like fifty. She pops up in this. Uh, yeah, I don't know what what to say about it, but um. Yeah, nice little Strangers ripoff. Um, I would go ahead and put this as a okay if desperate. It's, uh, but you know what you're getting. Next one, oh boy, 2019 Mary. Critic rating 4%, audience score 17%. I was looking at the reviews of this, and the, the, the one line... that that summed it up the best was lack of imagination. And that was from the one critic that gave this a good review. (laughs) Uh, It's it's such a basic run-of-the-mill haunting. It has Gary Oldman, great actor. I was excited that he was doing horror. It does have some nice moments. I especially like the part where the the salesman was selling Gary Oldman the haunted boat, and you never really got to see the salesman. He was always kind of at arm's reach, just just out of sight, lurking, lurking in the shadows. I thought that was kind of cool, but um, 
Beyond that, yeah, there's a ghost on the ship and it starts taking the family down one by one. The the, 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 the movie poster, it uh, prides itself on this, uh, this being from the writer of The Shallows. Well, The Shallows was a, as basic as heck movie itself. It was just filmed very well and told in a you know, well, good way. Well, good. This was just a very basic story told in a very humdrum way. But um, I can't poop it out too much, though. I would say... Skip it, for sure. Trying to think, is this dumpster fire garbage? Now, uh, I had to take a pause there to think, is this dumpster... This is can't quite recommend in my book. If you don't watch a lot of films, this movie's probably fine. Mary. Moving on. 2019, The Golden Glove. Critic rating 50%. Audience score of 80. It's a German movie, so you got some subtitles. I was excited about this one. Um... Because it's, it's about Fritz Hanke, who is uh, one of Germany's most prolific serial killers. It's a biopic of him. The story is fascinating. He would basically go to this same club called the Golden Glove. Or as they say over there, the, the Golden Duschkirchkloch. So he's, so he's at this, this awful seedy little bar. And he picks up the oldest, most desperate women. And he brings them home and you know, has fun with them. And then, um, and then he kills them. And then <laughs> he wraps them up in tarp. And uh, hides them in the walls of his little apartment. After several bodies have been pumped into the walls, as you can guess, a smell started to occur from his uh, his apartment. The people would complain, and eventually things would start leaking. Maggots and body slime would start leaking down under the people that lived beneath him, which I thought was fascinating. But um, yes, interesting story. <laughs> I would definitely put that on the watch list if you can handle the subtitles. Uh, going on to another movie with subtitles. 2019 Lutz. L-U-Z, Lutz. Critic rating of 86%. Audience score, 59. This was... Complete garbage. Up and down. The setting was cool. It looked like the building I went to elementary school in. It looked like it was straight out of the 80s. But, um... It's a possession film. And, um... The... The, the possessed person would kind of pass it on from person to person... And they would just act bizarre. And there was a whole lot of nothing going on. The best part of this film. No joke. The best part is that it is only 70 minutes long. If it was 90 minutes, that would have made me crazy. This is right down there with Climax as the worst things from 2019. And this was on the top three list of one of the guys from the Horror Movie Podcast, which is a great show. They do a great job. The podcasts are always fun. And I've been, I'm kind of modeling my show after them. Um, but um, one of the three hosts put this as his number three. And I can't understand in a million years why. 
But anyway, go avoid it and go ahead and avoid that one like Corona. That is dumpster fire garbage. 2019, Doctor Sleep. Critic rating 77%, audience score 89. Is it just me or does the, 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 not the bad guy with the bad girl, it's the female villain in this, looks like the singer of uh, Four Non Blondes? Is it just me? Um, I've seen and read so much from Stephen King that it's, it's all kind of old hat. I've, I've already, I've been there, done that with, with, uh, that author. This was all just kind of, I don't want to say your stuff is predictable, but it's kind of get predictable. And this movie is kind of like a lot of other ones. <sighs> but Chuck Love, tell them about the gruesome killing of the child. Oh yes, this film. Thank you, Kylo. Frank. But yes, this film had the 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 the, the bad girl the, from Four Non Blondes and her other demon friends kidnapped and killed the the boy from Wonder. And uh, they killed him in the most gruesome possible way. And this is like halfway in. This is not like part of the finale. This is just what they do. And it's the most disturbing. Not in a good way. It's like, that's not cool. We've discussed children being murdered. It's okay if it's quick or if it's off camera. You kind of, you know, it's suggestions letting you know what's going on but this was just stabbing him and stabbing him and stabbing him and stabbing him and he's coughing up blood and he's not dying he just <laughs> just yes this went on forever I trashed Stephen King but I also just watched the series the HBO series The Outsider based on one of his books and you know what it was really good Although there were a lot of, also a lot of familiar things that Stephen King does that were in that show, but that was really well, really good. Uh, Doctor Sleep is just okay. It's just okay if desperate. Um, 1987, yeah, let's go back a little ways. Blood Diner. This film's nuts. Critic rating 57%, audience score 51. This guy is teaching these two little boys, their brothers, he's teaching them like voodoo stuff. And he's uh, gets killed by the cops all of a sudden. When they were little, then it fast forwards like 15 years when they're adults. And they they dig up their their voodoo teacher out of the graveyard and uh, take his brain out of his uh, skeleton because you know after 15 years and you know the brain works just fine because that's what they were after and they put it in a jar and they put some electrodes to it and they then they also killed the security guard and took his eyeballs out. And that way they cooked up, they hooked up the eyeballs to the the brain in the jar, so they, so their voodoo teacher could see, and then they, and then they hooked up a little uh, speaker so he could, they could, he could, he could talk to them. Yes, this movie's weird. And then they uh, they opened up a diner, and um, yeah, they weren't eating beef. Um, <laughs> this, this is. So cheesy. Um, if you're into that, go for it. It's okay if desperate. Um, 2019 Manos. Critic rating 92%. Audience score of 85. This is not a horror. It was, I was deceived, but I still wanted to review it. Just in case it looks like something you're going to jump into. Uh, there's subtitles. and um, This is more of a coming-of-age film. This is... 
kind of like a Latin American stand by me. Best way I could describe it. There are some dark kind of horror elements to it. But, um, yeah. It's about these, uh, these children. They're basically children. I think the oldest is like 15. And they're given guns and they're in charge of this little space of land. And they have to kind of patrol this area by themselves, basically. They have one guy that stops by once in a while to bring supplies, but yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. Just uh, not what I was expecting. Um, I'd go ahead and say okay if desperate. If that sounds good to you. And here we go with our feature review of Ready or Not. officially part of the family so at midnight you have to play a game why it's just something we do when someone new joins the family a game 2019 ready or not critic rating 88 percent audience score 78 the stars samara weaving chalk loaf tell them what samara weaving has also been in Yes, Samara Weaving was also in Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is one of my favorite non-horror films of recent memory. If you were a early, early follower of the 1200 Films podcast when I was attempting to watch a billion mil movies in one year, you'll remember how high I was on that film. But yep, she's back and she's now in a horror film. Her and her husband to me are with the family and they have to play this game. Or they pick a random game and they end up playing hide and seek. But it's a twisted version. It's it's I'm probably the last person to see this film. <laughs> Everyone else is has seen this. I'm the last one. But anyway. No point in going too deep into it, but um Yes, a very good film. <laughs> a very nice little film. Um, the action was great. The gore was great. I'm winning, willing to bet dollars to donuts that there's going to be a sequel. And, of course, I will watch it. Hopefully it doesn't take me six months after everyone else has seen it to watch it, but who knows. Who knows? But yes, I definitely put that on top of the watch list. If you somehow in this world have not seen that film yet, yes, please watch. On the next episode, we will be watching, covering, I'll be watching, and then I'll be covering, and you'll be listening. Um, Freaks, uh, Dead Con, The Loss of Pastor, really? I've had to scrape solo on the barrel to watch movies. I have to watch movies called The Lassa Pastor. Watch it be the best film. Uh, then I have to watch uh, After Midnight. Then one on, uh, I think it's on Amazon, called Prey. And then um, two found footage movies I found. Fear Footage 1 and 2. Part 2 is from 2020. So I'll finally get that list going. It still has just one of the marshes. Um, and then another 2020 movie that um, I've got queued up ready to go called Underwater with Kristen Stewart from the Twilight movies. And a Twilight update, I guess the author of those books is putting out another one. So there could be another film. Who knows? Don't care. But, um, so that's it for this show. For, uh, on behalf of Kylo Ren slash Frank the Bunny, I'm Chuck Loaf. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>